say about Muhammad Ali that hasn't already been said. I mean, I remember in the 96 Olympics, him holding the flame, lighting the flame. Um, Evander Holyfield thought he should have gotten it until he found out that the replacement was Muhammad Ali. And you know, obviously it was uh, you know no one better uh, to, to light the flame back then, but with the hand shaking and everything, it's an inspiration. Uh, the, the personality that he had after you know, decades of uh, having Parkinson's and, you know, babysitting for people's kids and, you know, great with the kids and everything, just a great overall human being. And then obviously on the sports side, one of the most iconic figures in the history of sports. I mean, you could put him up there with Michael Jordan, Babe Ruth, any iconic name you could think of. He was well internationally known during a time, you know, when boxing was at its finest. And you talk about his skill set defensively, you talk about Floyd Mayweather, this guy was unhittable as well. He, he would toy with his opponents. He's a guy that you, the bad guy that you love to hate if you hated him. Um, but he did so much uh, for the sport of boxing and for the community's civil rights movement. Just an overall great human being and not just a great boxer. And it's. Um, it's very sad to see him go, and uh, he'll always be remembered by a lot of people and an inspiration to a lot of boxers and a lot of people all over the world. Rest in peace to the most influential athlete in American history, Muhammad Ali. All right. uh, Muhammad Ali in uh, 60 seconds, uh, someone that I looked up to. Uh, I was a little bit of a, a, a sports fanatic when I was in my younger youth, so I tried to my best to emulate him uh, on the field and everything that I did in life. So someone that I could look up to and, and, and take some guidance when it comes to uh, dealing with people and, and dealing with the politics and, and dealing with uh, human rights. And, and I really respect everything that he did um, for the world and, and, and for for the culture, the African-American culture in itself. So to his family, I want to say peace. We love you. Uh, I really thank you for giving him to us and allowing us to share all of the moments that we had on camera, off camera. And, and, and if, I, if, if I had a chance to, I, I would definitely, you know, give all of y'all a big hug and, and, and tell y'all just keep pushing on and, and we love you. So this is a, uh, DJ Triple Play, RTS TV, representing uh, Real Fans Real Talk. Peace. My earliest memories were when, um, well, I, I grew up in Queens, and there was a couple of things going on. The little te those little televisions came out that you could put on the kitchen table. Um, and so there were different things that the, the families used to do. It was row houses. And, um, the ladies used to get together and watch soap operas. They used to watch like Dark Shadows because it had one black actor in that same show. We used to watch the Olympics and they used to watch the boxing. So we would, um, the kids, we were able to play late when the, when the adults were watching something like that. So when Muhammad Ali came on though, when they were boxing, I wasn't out playing. I was watching the fight because even though I was a kid, Muhammad Ali was so fine. He was so cute. He was like, I don't care. Just don't, don't hit me in my face. Just don't mess up my face. I was like, yeah, just don't mess up his face. And um, I liked his confidence. And he, he, he was smart too. He knew a lot of things, even though, you know, people try to say that athletes don't know a whole lot. He was really smart, and I like the fact that um, I like the stance he took on the Vietnam War. All these things I remember, they, they stuck out for me as a child. Um, him helping people. I remember seeing something on the news where um, this guy was going to jump. He was going to commit suicide jumping out the window, and Muhammad Ali happened to be in the area, and he talked him down. Um, it's just all these kind of things that he did that he he was the reason I even paid attention to what Muslim was all about, you know, because he switched over there and I was like, well, what was that? I mean, it, it's not something that I did, but it was something that I learned from. So, um, I know he was the only reason I ever watched boxing. 
I did not care about boxing unless Muhammad Ali was fighting. So um, coming up, he was really a, a one of the larger images in my mind. What's going on? It's Sean Fontaine here, one of your hosts, uh, also cousin Peter. Everybody's cookout this summer. Um, you know, I just want to talk briefly about Muhammad Ali. He's a very, very, very inspirational guy. Um, in a very trying time. Uh, he gave up some of his uh, best years during the prime of his time to uh, be an activist and stand for something that he loved, um, you know. And, uh, and it's very sad that we lost him. You know, he's very, he was sick for a lot of years, and uh, to see him go is still such a sad, sad thing. So, Muhammad Ali, all our feet, salute. My first recollection of seeing Muhammad was when he was fighting in the Olympics in the preliminary rounds. I, I was an avid boxing fan because my mother watched boxing. And Muhammad Ali, his ability to dance and dodge blows just captivated me. Uh, while I watched the first two rounds of his fight with whoever he was fighting, I said out loud in the house, oh, he's gonna be the champion. And, and I only said it because I hadn't seen anybody fight the way he fought. Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, who my mother was a fan of and who I watched on television, he used to destroy men by just standing still almost and body beating them while he was fighting. But Muhammad's dancing and that float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I was so impressed because he was writing poetry while he was on his feet, <laughs> like that. <laughs> and to see people swing at him, and then it seemed like at the last minute he would move. It wasn't like he just moved all the time. He was like waiting until he was at risk before he said, ah, oh, it's time to move. And then <laughs> what I realized when he got to the professional lane, he would hit a man five or six times, and when he felt like it, he'd just grab him. <laughs> hit him and grab him so they couldn't hit him back. <laughs> I knew when I watched him win the Olympics that he was gonna be the next heavyweight champion because there was nobody fighting at the time that had even half of his skill level. And then I saw people try to mimic what he did and follow behind him. But when Mohammed said that he had never had nobody I think he said, no Viet Cong has ever called me nigger, which is why he said, no, I'm not going to fight nobody and kill somebody who, who ain't done nothing to me. And the country I live in don't want me to have what I'm supposed to have. And his standing up to the army, the profession, and losing his titles because of his integrity, can't beat a man like that. That's why he was a world-renowned hero. That's why I'm cheering up as I think about another one of the greatest of our race is no longer here. He will be missed. Peace. Um, did I say something about Muhammad Ali, uh, AKA Cassius Clay? But in uh, 1963, I knew uh, Muhammad, well, I knew of Cassius Clay at the time. And uh, in 1963, there was a young man um, named Judas McIntosh. He was going to fight uh, Cassius Clay before he became famous. And we were asking him not to go, you know, to fight him and everything. But anyway, he didn't listen. He felt that because he was big and strong, he would go and he would fight Cassius Clay. So he went on up and uh, he fought Cassius Clay and he came back with his forehead like this here, you know, and his face all swollen up. And I didn't tease nobody, but other people were teasing him. And I told you to go mess with Cassius Clay. I told you to go mess with Cassius. And that was like in 1963. Then he went on and won the Olympics and then the gold, uh, Golden Gloves or whatever. But then as the time went by, you know, I would see him once in a while with um, Harry Belafonte and Martin Luther King because I marched with Martin Luther King and all that. So he would be there sometime, you know, in, in the marches and things. And um, then he got with um, the, the Nation of Islam. Uh, so, but, um, and then recently, uh, I think around about 2012, I think it was, or 13, I believe it was, 
Um, I, you know, I, we do the 10K run at Russell Plaza. And they will always ask me to get a celebrity out to bring the crowd out for the 10K run that we run all the way down, you know, Berkham and all the way around, uh, halfway around the city, uh, in Brooklyn, that is. And make a story short, so what happened was, um, they, I had uh, brought Jim Brown here, brought uh, Austin Davis, uh, brought uh, Bill Duke and them here. Uh, so then uh, I was going to bring, I was going to get Muhammad. At the time, you know, he wasn't able to come, so I asked him, you know, about later. He asked me to call her, so I called her. And um, so she wouldn't come out to the 10K run, but then, uh, she, you know, I never did, you know, follow it up. So outside of that, so, but with Muhammad, I mean, he was, he, he was a great inspiration. He was a great man for us as a, our kind because, I mean, he spoke his mind. I was afraid a lot of times that when he would say certain things, because of what we were going through at the time, you know, fighting racism and things. And I mean, you know, but he gave us a lot of inspiration as well as um, Harry Belafonte and um, Cindy Portier. A lot of people don't know what I mean by all that. Uh, but but, um, but when, when he refused to go to the military, man, that was really something. That was really nice too, because like he stated, y'all know what he stated. I ain't gonna go there, but uh, you know, but he, he was a great man. He still is a great man. Even though he's visiting, uh, you know, our Lord, uh, you know, he's looking down and stuff, and he's still seeing who is real and who is phony, you know. Um, so, um, Muhammad, you are the man, here and there, you know, then and now, you know. And uh, look down on us and give the true ones of us, you know, the right thing to say, the right thing to do, you know, to make things better for us and other people. What's up guys, it's your favorite ladybug and I just wanted to give you my fondest memory of Ali. Growing up, me and my dad had a really close bond. So, Muhammad Ali, Layla Ali, growing up, seeing him training her, seeing him working with her, and, and really getting her to do and, and achieve her dreams, him being behind her all the way, really reminds me of the bond that me and my dad have to this day. So, to see that he's gone, is something that kind of hurts me on the inside. It's a little personal blow because I don't know what I would do if I lost my dad. And Layla Ali, so strong for doing what she's doing. She keep doing it for her family. So, hey, you know, on, everyone. This is Eric, AKA Legend in Two Games. And this is for Real Fans, RealTalk.com. Uh, my fondest memory of Ali, even though he was before my time, I was really a big fan of just his courage and his consciousness, um, understanding the moment. Uh, this is a guy who put his career on the line at a very early age. He lost his championship, and he really could have lost his life for the things that he was standing behind. So that's what I've always loved about him, and that's what I truly appreciate about Muhammad Ali. What's going on? It's Trip Young, and uh, we on location right now. We outside of 40 Acres in the Mule uh, headquarters. So shout out to Spike. I seen on the on the gram early. He posted up a pic next to this, uh, you know, the Muhammad Ali man, and I really respected the fact that he did that, paying homage to uh, Muhammad Ali. And since we at Real Fans Real Talk want to put together our own little tribute to Muhammad Ali, I figured that it would only be fitting that I come out since we're already in Brooklyn, a couple of blocks away from the station, and say my piece right here in front of the, uh, the banner. So. Uh, First off, rest in peace to Muhammad Ali, definitely the greatest. I know I talk about the money team a lot, but uh, before there was a Floyd Mayweather, before there was a De La Hoya, before there was a Mike Tyson, there was Muhammad Ali, and he was definitely the greatest to ever do it. And I think the reason why he was the greatest to ever do it was not even so much about what he did inside the ring, but what he had to deal with outside of the ring, you know, just uh, during the whole, of the, the, you know, the, the end of the civil rights movement, and uh, the Vietnam War and all of the, you know, the, the race issues that was going on. So um, I think that's why I feel like he's the greatest of all time. Because it's one thing to go in a fight when you don't have, you know, those kind of distractions on your mind. But it's a whole other thing when you got to deal with, you know, the racial issues, the political issues, you know, and you still go in that ring and you still are the best that would do it. So uh, definitely rest in peace to uh, Muhammad Ali. Condolences to his family, and we out of here, man.